the Assumption of the Most Blessed Virgin Mary. Last Sunday, the gospel was about uh, the people grumbling when Jesus said, I am the bread of life. In John 6, 41 to 51. Today, the gospel will be about the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, reported in Luke 1, 39, 56. The Gospel today is about the Feast of the Assumption of the Beloved Day and Blessed Virgin Mary, reported by Luke 1, 39, 56. An individual Mass that precedes the Feast, the festivity celebrated today, we had the Gospel when Jesus defined true happiness in Luke 11, 27, 28. You have a couple of uh, paintings about the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And here you have a vitral, a stained glass type of uh, art that has become popular in the last centuries. Before reading and deconstructing the Gospel for today, we may find useful to take into account the Gospel of the Vigil Mass that precedes the festivity of the Assumption of Mary, when Jesus defined what is true happiness in Luke 11, 27 to 28. When Jesus had said this, a woman spoke up from, from the crowd and said to him, Happy? How happy is the woman who bore you and nursed you? But Jesus answered, Rather, how happy are those who hear the word of God and obey it? Everybody wants to be happy. Why don't we let Jesus tell us what is true happiness? Let's find uh, what is true happiness according to the Lord. These two verses can and have been misinterpreted by many people. The anonymous woman who said this was probably a, a recent follower of the Lord. At first glance, it does look like a rebuttal or rejection from Jesus to the spontaneous and maybe overenthusiastic expression of affection toward Jesus by way of, by way of uh, his blessed mother. But if we look deeper into what Jesus really said, we can discern that definitely Jesus was not rejecting the praise to his mother, but clarifying and approving it for the woman and also for us. This is what he said, rather, how happy are those who hear the word of God and obey it. And who was the young virgin that received and obey the word of God? It was the young virgin, Mary. In order to really understand the assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary, it may be useful to remember the Annunciation narrated in Luke 1, verses 30 to 35. The angel said to her, Don't be afraid, Mary. God has been gracious to you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will make him a king, as his ancestor David was. And he will be the king of the descendants of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. And Mary said to the angel, I'm a virgin. How then can this be? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will, will come on you and God's power will rest upon you. For this reason, the Holy Child will be called the Son of God. In Luke 1, verses 32, 35. And here you have a picture a painting of the angel announcing to Mary. 
Then the Blessed Virgin Mary has answered in Luke 138, I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it happen to me as you have said. And the angel left her. He was done. Then the incarnation of Jesus, the only Son of God, became a, a reality, Emmanuel, which means God is with us. The Gospel today gives us an insight about the visit of the Blessed Virgin Mary to Elizabeth, and also Mary's Song of Praise, also known or called the Magnificat, in Luke 1, 39 to 56. And here you have a picture of the encounter between Mary and Elizabeth, and the greetings from uh, Mary and the answer from Elizabeth. And here's the gospel for today, in Luke 1, 39 to 45. Soon afterward, Mary got ready and hurried off to a town in the hill country of Judea. She went into Zachariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby moved within her. Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and said in a loud voice, You are the most blessed of all women and blessed is the child you will bear. Why should this great thing happen to me that my Lord's mother comes to visit me? For as soon as I heard your greetings, the baby within me jumped with gladness. How happy are you to believe that the Lord's message to you will come through? And here you have a mosaic to remember the meeting between Mary and Elizabeth. Continue with the Gospel for today, Mary's Song of Praise. You look for the 6 to 52. Mary said, My heart praises the Lord. My soul is glad because my of because of God my Savior. For he has remembered me, his lowly servant. From now on, all people will call me happy or blessed because of the great thing the mighty God has done for me. His name is Holy. From one generation to another, he shows mercy to those who honor him. He has stretched out his mighty arm and scattered the proud with all their plans. He has brought down mighty kings from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. That's a merry song of praise in Luke 1, 46 to 55. Mary's magnificent God from Luke 1, 46 to 55. Continuing with the Gospel, he has, he has filled the hungry with God, good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has kept the promise he made to our ancestors and has come to the help of his servant Israel. He has remembered to show mercy to Abraham and to all his descendants forever. Mary stayed about three months with Elizabeth and then went back home. Now, we can deconstruct the Gospel to find the central characters, facts, items, and activities. After the Annunciation and Mary's acceptance to give human life to the only Son of God, she went to visit Elizabeth. When she heard, Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, her baby moved within her and jumped with gladness. She was pregnant with John the Baptist, and she was filled with the Holy Spirit who inspired her to say, you are the most blessed of all women, and blessed is the child you will bear. Why should this great thing happen to me, that my Lord's mother comes to visit me? 
how happy you are to believe that the Lord's message to you will come through. The Blessed Virgin Mary was then just a young woman who humbly described herself as a Lord's servant, but she gave us the most comprehensive description about who was God to her. The Blessed Virgin Mary declared that who is her magnificent God. My heart praises the Lord. My soul is glad because God, my Savior. From now on, all people will call me happy, blessed in other translations, because of the great things the mighty God has done for me. His name is holy. He shows mercy to those who honor him. He has stretched out his mighty arm and scattered the proud with all their plans. He has brought down mighty kings from the thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the, hung fed, filled the hungry with good things. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has kept the promise he made to our ancestors and has come to help of his servant Israel. He has remembered to show mercy to Abraham and to all his descendants forever. Mary stayed about three months with Elizabeth and then went back home. What does the Magisterium of the Church tell us about the Assumption of Mary? The Immaculate Virgin preserved free from all stain of original sin. When the course of her earthly life was finished, was taking up body and soul into heavenly glory and exalted by the Lord as queen over all things so that she might be the more fully conformed to her son, the Lord of Lords and conqueror of sins and death. By Pope Pius XII, by Sifentissimus Deus in 1950. This is from the Catechism Paragraph 966. The Assumption of the Blessed Virgin is a singular participation in her son's resurrection and an anticipation of the resurrections of other Christians. In giving birth, you kept your virginity. In your dormition, dormition you did not leave the world, O Mother of God, but were joined to the source of life. You conceived the living God, and by your prayers, will deliver our souls from death. From the Byzantine liturgy, Troparion, Feast of the Dormition, celebrated in August the 15th. The Blessed Virgin Mary, when the course of her earthly life was finished, was taken to heaven in body and soul. Catechism, paragraph 966, Magisterium of the Church. We probably need to remember the four Marian dogmas. First one, declaring the Divine Motherhood, proclaimed at the Council of Ephesus in the year 431, and further explained by the Council of Caledonia, Chalcedon, in the year 450. One. Number two, perpetual virginity, proclaimed at the Council of Lateran in the year 649. Immaculate Conception, proclaimed as an independent dogma by Pope Pius IX in his Apostolic Constitution in Ifabilis Deus on December 8, 1854. And finally, the last dogma, the Assumption, proclaimed by Pope Pius XII on the his encyclical Marifentissimus. Marifentissimus Deus, on November 1st, 1950. 
you have 1,519 years between the first dogma and the last dogma of the Assumption, which is the one we are celebrating today. The fact that the Blessed Virgin Mary was taken up body and soul into heavenly glory and that her intercession was tacitly, it means we have to understand it, was tacitly accepted by the Lord at the miracle of the wedding in Cana, may be enough information for us to understand that the Lord approves and likes intercession. It's evident that at the time that that happened, Jesus had other timing in his mind to reveal his glory. But Mary's intercession was essential for him to reconsider taking action. He performed his first miracle, revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Mary was not the one performing the miracle in Cana, it was Jesus. She just interceded. It looks like uh, when we have, when we have a problem arise, and in order to perform a miracle or to somewhat get involved to help, Jesus is pleased when someone intercedes for us, like Mary did in Cana, interceding for the recently married couple. Here we can find some examples of intercessions that the Lord liked and approved. The wedding in Cana that we just saw, John 2, verses 1 to 11. When Jesus healed that ruler's son, John 4, 43 to 54. When Jesus heals a paralyzed man, Mark 2, 1 to 12. Matthew, chapter 9, 1 to 8. And Luke, chapter 5, verses 17 to 26. When Jesus heals a Roman officer's servant in Matthew, chapter 8, verses 5 to 13, and also in Luke, chapter 7, verses 1 to 10. Here are just some examples of intercession. Some Christians may have doubts, some doubts about praying to the angels and archangels, or to Mary or the saints, to intercede with Jesus for us or for somebody else. I have no doubt about this. The Church is very clear in this matter and encourages the faithful to pray and ask for intercession. Maybe we are a little bit more familiar with something we pray during the Holy Mass. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, Ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. So the Church is very clear about intercession, and we should be also. This Gospel, the Lord is teaching us, and we should be able to identify and understand at least six important teachings. Teaching number one, the Immaculate Virgin preserved free from all stain of original sin when the course of her earthly life was finished, was taken up body and soul into heavenly glory. The assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary is a singular participation in her son's resurrection, and also an anticipation of the resurrection of other Christians. That means us. It's an anticipation of our own resurrection. Teaching number two. The Blessed Virgin Mary was then just a young woman who humbly described herself as, as a Lord servant. But she gave us the most comprehensive description about who God was to her. My heart praises the Lord. My soul is glad because of God, my Savior. The people will call me happy, blessed, in other translations, because of the great things the mighty God has done for me. His name is holy, and he shows mercy to those who honor him. Teacher number three, 
the incarnation of Jesus was possible because when the angel came to Mary and said, Peace be with you, the Lord is with you and has greatly blessed you. Don't be afraid, Mary. God has been gracious to you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and you will name him Jesus. And she freely accepted the will of God. Luke 1, verse 38. Obedience is our gift of, to God. Mary's obedience was a gift, her gift to God. Teacher number four. Jesus already defined what really, real, real happiness is. To hear and obey the word of God. God makes all things new. From Acts 3, verse 21. Teacher number five, after Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, she shared some key proclamations or revelations. Mary is the most blessed of all women. The child Mary will give birth to is also blessed. Elizabeth recognized that the mother of her Lord came to visit her and that it was a great thing even though she didn't know why it happened. She was surprised about it. Elizabeth declares that Mary is happy because she believes that the Lord's message to her will come to be true. Teacher number six, there is nothing, absolutely nothing wrong to ask the Blessed Virgin Mary for her intercession for us. The Blessed Virgin Mary heard and obeyed the Word of God and became the Mother of God incarnated. The Blessed Virgin Mary declared her faith in God's promise to send the Messiah and recognize Him as her Savior. Her unique assumption to heaven is a herald of what is going to happen at the end of time when Jesus will come back to resurrect and judge mankind and take his people to the kingdom. The Catechism, paragraph 974, the most blessed Virgin Mary, when the course of her earthly life was completed, it was taking up body and soul into the glory of heaven, which she already shares in the glory of her son's resurrection, anticipating the resurrection of all members of his body. Some key concepts that you may find useful to remember. The Immaculate Virgin Mary was preserved free from all stain of original sin. When the course of her earthly life was finished, she was taken up body and soul into heavenly body. From Catechism 966. The Assumption of the Blessed Virgin is a singular participation in her son's resurrection and an anticipation of the resurrection of other Christians. Catechism 996. Jesus defined what, what true happiness is from Luke chapter 11, verses 27 to 28. The incarnation of Jesus was done because the Immaculate Woman chose, chosen by God, the Immaculate Woman chosen by God freely accepted His will, freely accepted His will from Luke 1, verse 38. Elizabeth, soon to be the mother of John the Baptist, was in, inspired by the Holy Spirit to reveal that Mary was the most blessed of all women and that blessed is the child that she was, will bear from June, Luke 1, verses 39 to 45. And that she was amazed that her Lord's mother came to visit her from Luke 1, 29 to 45. And also acknowledge that how happy or blessed Mary was to believe that the Lord's message to her will come true. For Luke also, 39 to 45. Let's ask you some questions. Why did the Immaculate Virgin Mary was taken up body and soul into heavenly glory? What is true happiness according to Jesus? 
Why did the incarnation of Jesus became a reality? What Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, was inspired by the Holy Spirit to reveal about Mary and Jesus? Why was Mary so happy about? What is Mary's song of praise to God also call? Why is Mary the most blessed of all women? Why is the child Mary was carrying also blessed? What did Elizabeth recognize about Mary? Why Elizabeth declares that Mary is happy or blessed? Why is the Virgin, why is the right to us the Blessed Mary for her intercession with the Lord? Lessons were taken from the Good News Translation, GMT, and the Catechism of the Catholic Church. And this is Alejandro Burgos from El Paso, Texas. This was the Gospel for this Sunday. If this mini workshop has been somehow helpful to you, please give it a like and feel free to share it. And I see you next Sunday. Don't forget, 